On this report, I want to go over what we've accomplished in 2011 since our last annual meeting, what we've got scheduled for 2012 and some coming, and then I also want to talk a little bit about some political action that we've been involved with this last year. Our first accomplishment was completion of the fiber to the home. This has been a long project. I think we've been at this about five years, but we finally have completed that. And I wanted to show just what was involved in getting that fiber to the home. We've got 12 exchanges uh, on the east side, the 10 exchanges, and then we've got the two on the west side, Lennon Palmer. When you look at the land mass, we've got 1,086 square miles that we've actually covered with fiber optics to be able to get that to each of our subscribers. We have 3,853 subscribers. So when you take a look at that, we've got 3.55 subscribers per square mile. Or if you want to look on as far as road miles, we're at 3.27 subscribers per road mile. So it's pretty sparsely populated out here where we're at. But we wanted to get that technology out. I wanted to compare a little bit to give you an idea of what it's like in an urban area. And I picked Washington, D.C. Uh, intentionally because we're actually dealing with the FCC and government and they're the ones that are determining how much support we should get out here in rural areas. So I wanted to take a look at Washington, D.C. And in that area, they have 68.3 square miles. That's just in the District of Columbia. But then there's the Potomac uh, River that goes through there, so if you take the water out, they've actually got 61.4 square miles in the District of Columbia. Their population, they've got a little over 600,000 population, and their house, housing units, or if you want to say subscribers, would be a little over 296,000 housing units. When you divide that out, that means they've got 4,833 subscribers per square mile. Now we just looked at what it is for Blue Valley. Blue Valley has 3,853 subscribers for a little over 1,000 square miles. Now, I bring this up because back in 1934 and then in 1996, Congress passed what was called Universal Service. Universal Service is a fund that every subscriber, every phone subscriber in the United States pays into and with the intent of then supporting telecommunication services in rural areas. You can imagine that for us to put a, a mile of fiber in to reach only three and a half subscribers compared to what it would be in Washington, D.C., our costs are a lot higher. And if you had to pay that particular phone bill, uh, for putting that fiber in and have that phone service you couldn't afford it. So the Telecommunications Act of 3496 actually made it affordable. That, that was the whole idea of universal service plan. It was to be affordable phone service throughout the whole United States. So that's what we're dealing with as far as USF. And we're going to be discussing a little bit more about that. And the reason I picked Washington, D.C., right now we're in a battle with the FCC. They want to take our USF and cut what we actually uh, were to be obtaining as a result of putting that fiber in the ground. So when we started this project five years ago, there were rules in place. And those rules said that we would recover on what we invested, and then we could pay back the money which we actually borrowed from the federal government, another agency, which is RUS, which is, Department of, which is part of the uh, Department of Agriculture. So we borrowed from one agency, and now we've got another agency, the FCC, that is wanting to cut our support so that we're not able to pay back the slums. So we're kind of caught between two agencies in Washington, D.C., so right now we're not too happy with Washington. So going on, like I said, we put in, when you look at the miles of fiber optics that we put in, we've got 1,386 miles of fiber optics to cover these 12 exchanges. Now, I thought maybe it would be a, a little bit of a help to put it in perspective. What is 1,386 miles? This is a map of the United States. If you were to travel to Los Angeles, that's 1,262 miles. 
So we've got enough fiber optics to go beyond Los Angeles. Boston is 1,331 miles. So we can even go beyond that with our fiber optics. That is how much fiber we've got in the ground for our 12 exchanges. And for Terry's sake, I put in to Washington, D.C., it's 1,042 miles. <laughs> so we could have a direct line to the president or to, better yet, to the FCC and let them know that we need these, this fiber out here in rural America. So what do you do with fiber optics? Obviously, voice service. Like I said, we've got 3,853 voice subscribers. But we've got internet over that same fiber optics, 2,302 subscribers. So we've got 60% of our voice subscribers are on the internet today, which is a very high take rate. We're also putting IPTV video over that fiber optics. We've got 1,967 subscribers. So that's about 51, so about half of our voice subscribers are actually on video. And again, that's all going through that piece of glass that fiber optics is going to each house. So what is broadband? You know, we hear the term broadband, and uh, there's a lot of confusion as to what is broadband. A lot of people think, well, it's internet, or it's different things like that. Broadband, if I could put it down in simple terms, it's a pipe. If uh, you have a horse tank, and you decide that you want to fill that horse tank up with water, and you're, you're going to use a garden hose, you can fill that horse tank up. It may take 10 hours, 5 hours, whatever it is. But if you want to fill it up faster, suppose you take a fire hose and put it there and fill it up. You're going to accomplish the same thing. You're going to fill that horse tank. But the broadband pipe determines how quickly you can do that. Now we talk about speeds, broadband speeds, but really all we're talking about is the size of that pipe. How quickly can something be moved through that pipe? And it's gonna depend on the size. So that's why you hear, uh, well, for example, with Blue Valley here, we've got three megabit of service. We can go up to 10 megabits. Again, that's a bigger pipe. It just means that data can be moved faster through that pipe if it's a bigger pipe. So, Again, it gets a little confusing sometimes because we say, well, what speed? What speed? Well, it's really not speed, it's the size that's, that we're looking at. So like I said, with broadband, the word over our broadband, which is our fiber optics, we're actually doing video, internet, and voice services. But there's a whole lot more that broadband will do for us. We've got a telemedicine that's done over broadband, distance learning. You can get YouTube. You can get a video over your broadband connection. You can do business, e-commerce, uh, entertainment. There's a lot of gaming that goes on. And there's also video downloads like Netflix and Hulu and uh, Roku boxes and those sort of things. Those all use a broadband connection to be able to get that content. Then there's social media, social networking, excuse me, social networking. And what that is, like Twitter, Facebook, all these things that we're doing today to stay connected are through a broadband connection. But the thing to keep in mind, all of these are applications. Still, when we talk broadband, it's the pipe. It's the fiber optics. All these other things are applications that come over that broadband network. And we're going to be seeing more and more applications all the time. Of course, that's going to require more bandwidth all the time. I wanted to bring this up. Today, like I said, Blue Valley can offer up to 10 megabits of service. And as we improve our equipment and uh, put in different lasers and that sort of thing on the ends of the fiber optics, we can improve the amount of bandwidth that we can get to the end user. Unfortunately, the FCC has determined that in rural America, all we need is four megabits. And in the urban areas, though, they're entitled to have 100 megabits. So there's a digital divide going on right now. And when I say four megabits, what the FCC is proposing to do is to only fund or pay to get four megabits of service out here in the rural areas. Well, we've already exceeded that. Today we can offer 10 megabits. And we can go beyond that. Eventually we may be able to offer 100 megabits. But all they're going to fund us for is the four megabits. So there's real digital divide between urban and rural, and that's one thing we're fighting with the FCC right now on. 
And really, you think about it. Who needs broadband more? And when you're in the urban areas, you go to a doctor. But in the rural areas, you can't always go to a doctor, so you need telemedicine. Wow, that takes broadband. And what about distance learning? In, in the urban areas, there's colleges, there's schools. But in the rural areas, we don't have access to all those teachers. So we need distance learning. That takes broadband. So to me, they've got it upside down. Rural needs broadband more than the urban areas do. I'm looking about my soapbox now. <laughs> Uh, another accomplishment, we've actually are in the process of converting everybody over to our soft switch. Um, this is a picture, our legacy EWSD switch on the left there, it's actually four racks, if you will, of equipment, and it was put in quite a few years ago. We made about $5 million for that switch. And at the time, we were pretty proud of it, the fact that it would switch Chicago. It was a pretty powerful switch. Well, since that time, they come out with what they call soft switches. So we've got a managed switch, soft switch, that's on the right-hand side there. It takes up about a third of a rack. And really, it's nothing more than a powerful computer. And so we're doing our switching today through that managed soft switch. It's kind of a tongue twister. But um, we're able also then, with that soft switch, to be able to offer voicemail, and a lot of different other services that we couldn't offer with our EWS before. We also are able to do host of businesses, uh, phones there, host of business phones. Uh, we call that host of PBXs, but what it means is a business can actually have a phone system that is switched through our switch rather than having their own separate switching right in their, off, in their business there. So going on, Another accomplishment for us was the growth of our non-regulated business. Now this is important, and I think Terry's going to be referring to this in a little bit. The FCC is targeting our regulated revenues. Our regular rev regulated revenues are the USF that we're drawing from uh, the Universal Service Fund. So we're then working to grow our non-regulated, because the non-regulated is not controlled by the FCC. So they can't touch that, in theory. And so we've worked hard to do that. Some of the way we've done that, we've gone in and started to see like a surrounding AT&T towns. We've gone into five different communities this last year. We're in Marysville, uh, Waterville, Washington, Frankfurt, and Hanover. Now what we're able to do there, when I say CLEC, that's competitive local exchange carrier. That means we're competing with AT&T in those towns. But we're able to go in and provide voice service, video service and internet service, actually better than what at and is doing. So as a result of that, we're getting a really good take rate on our first year as subscribers. In fact, we're at about a 25% take rate in one year's time, so it's been very successful. This is a uh, picture that I took my cell phone, and so it's not very clear, but this is the plant that we've got in those communities. As I said, we're using cable plant. So it's all aerial, it's all on the poles, but it's a, a coax that's going to each home, and then through that coax, we're able to do the voice and the video and the internet. Another thing that we've accomplished is we've started to reach out to our local businesses and to actually create more businesses as a result of that. We've done that by actually taking uh, a business rep, uh, Chad Hilgen. He is our business rep now. He's going out and meeting with our local businesses, listening to them to find out what their needs are, and then presenting to them what we can do for them. A lot of the opportunities we've had so far have been in the area of broadband. These companies want good broadband. And so we've been able to do that. We've also got two guys that are going out and doing our installing for us on the non-ranked side, and they're being kept busy. These are just a few of the businesses that we've been able to work with locally and be able to provide the service to them. We're pretty excited about that, that we're able to work with them. And, and those companies are excited to work with Blue Valley because they know of our reputation. And as far as business phones, that's one area too that Chad's been hitting hard on. All of our business phones were pretty well antiquated out in these, uh, these areas, the key systems that were out there. So Chad's going out and upgrading their business phones. And uh, so, so far, I think we've got 15 phones systems that we've upgraded, which is really a good deal, and it's good for the companies that we're working with. 
Another area we're looking at is security systems. We've rolled that out this last year. This is a display of the security systems. I don't know if you're aware or not, but with the downturn in the economy, there's been a lot more thefts lately, and especially in this area. And so we've had subscribers coming to us, customers coming and asking, can we provide security? And so we've gotten into that business now. We do provide security. And this is a 24-hour monitored service so that uh, if anybody were to go there, there's motion sensors and there's uh, uh, door sensors and that sort of thing. So if there's any kind of activity around there, it's reported. And actually, uh, on Thanksgiving Day, uh, my sit I had a system uh, put into my shop there in Marysville. And uh, I was pretty thrilled to get it. It was just the day before Thanksgiving, and I was out of town on Thanksgiving Day, and all of a sudden I got a call from the call center saying some, my alarm had gone off in my shed. Well, I was in Mary, or in Lincoln, so the, uh, they asked me what do you want to do. So I said, well, I'll call the police. So the police went over, and what had happened was the wind was blowing that day, and the sensor was set so sensitive that the building had then moved a little bit and set the alarm off. Fortunately, I had a key there in the community, so I could get someone the, over there to turn it off. But So I knew it worked, and I knew the call center worked because they called me on my cell phone. But if you're wanting peace of mind, these are great security systems. They're, they're monitored 24 hours a day. <clears throat> We've also now offered computer sales. We in the past didn't have computers here, well now we do. When customers come in and need help in selecting a computer, we have guys here that can help you to figure out what your need is, what type of computer you need. Also, if you would happen to bring a computer in that's unrepairable for some reason, all of a sudden your hard drive crashed or something, and it's not worth fixing, you can walk out that day with a computer. So I think this is a great service for our patrons to be able to come in and get those uh, computers. Video production is another area that we've increased in. We're working with the local schools to, we are actually giving them a video camera used in their media departments and exchange there then to produce pieces that we can run on our channel three. So they actually go out and do the videotaping, they'll do the editing, and then they submit it to us. Last month we had, we had 24 uh, video clips submitted to us by the local schools. So it's a win-win situation. The media class is getting the cameras to be able to do the videotaping and learning how to use those cameras. And then we're getting content to be able to put on our channel three. Another area along that line is that we are doing business advertising now. And so we're able to produce those advertisements. You may have seen some of them. Uh, they like donuts, had us do an advertisement for them. USD 360, Community Memorial Healthcare, Pony Express Auto. A lot of these different advertisements that you're seeing inserted during while you're watching ESPN or different channels are produced by Blue Valley. So for 2012, we're looking to roll out surveillance systems. This is an add-on to our security systems. With surveillance, they'll actually be video cameras set at your establishment so if there's any kind of activity it's recorded so you'll be able to go back and look through that recording to see what what went on there another product we're looking to roll out is the technology solutions and what do you mean by that how many of you have gotten a new tv or a new dvd or you've got a new computer and you, or a new printer and you just don't know quite how to get it all set up or how to get everything working together or get a surround sound system. How do you tie that all in? We're going to roll out this service to where our technicians can come in and help you with that. To get those components to work together, get your computers networked together, and then if you have any problems after that, we're here to help you. So this is going to be a new service for those in the, in the uh, home environment, but also we're looking at IT consulting. There's a lot of businesses today that they aren't big enough to have their own IT professionals, but they have needs. They want to be able to have good, solid business computers. But well, we're going to roll out the service where we'll be able to go in on a temporary basis, just a few hours a week, 
and be able to do that IT for them and keep those computers operating. We're looking at retail store this year. We've got a lot of products, like I mentioned, with the computer sales, the surveillance, the security cameras. So we're going to combine all of those. We're also going to work upstairs to open it up and make it more of a retail environment. So you'll be able to come in and buy accessories, you'll be able to shop, maybe you want to buy a TV, we'll be able to help you buy TVs or surround sound systems or various things like that. So we'll be here to help you with those. Last thing I wanted to mention is the big business incubator. We started this last year. Today we don't have anybody in our business incubator, but we are actively uh, going up to find people for that. What that is, we have a lot of people with great ideas, great, they're entrepreneurs, they want to get started in business, but it's very costly to get started in business. So we've got it with our building that we had, that the phone company was in, we've opened that up as what we call a business incubator. So a, kind of a, a guy or a lady that wants to come in and start a new business can come in and get a reduced grant, they can get reduced services, and they'll be able to get started and get their feet on the ground and start producing revenues. We'll also be able to give them guidance and counseling on how to do your business, how to grow your business. And the concept being that after two or three years, they should have gotten large enough, their business should have grown enough where they would graduate and actually move out and go on their own. So it's in fact an incubator. We're making that available. And I'm really excited about seeing that grow this year. Political activities. I'm going to cut this as short as I can. I've been in Washington quite a few times this last year, and uh, I never really thought I'd get too much involved in politics, but I've learned a lot. Um, basically, what we're seeing, you know, whether it's the post office, or the EPA, or the Department of Labor, or the FCC, we're fighting for rural America. They're wanting to take our way of life away from us. They don't think that they should support us in the rural areas. And for the first time in our nation's history, we're no longer a rural country. We are an urban country. More people are from the urban and, they, and more concentration, are the, more the focus of laws and that sort of thing are on the urban. So we're in a fight to keep rural America. And you know, as many of you know, the post office uh, we didn't come out that very well, but we did fight for it. EPA, I don't know if you've all heard, but the EPA actually wanted to regulate how much dust could be generated in Kansas by the farmers. Uh, fortunately, I don't think that's come about, but you kind of wonder how do people in Washington even know how much dust is being generated? Okay. <laughs> um, and Department of Labor, of course, that had to do with child labor laws and they don't want the rural kids to be able to work on the farms. Um, our fight in particular, we're fighting with the FCC, and I say fight, they've ruled out some rules that are unfavorable to us, so we're doing what we can to show them what the negative impact would be to a, not only to our company, but to you as subscribers, and what it would do to our rural way of life. These three people are appointed by President Obama. Uh, there are actually five SEC commissioners. There's five slots for SEC commissioners. Two slots are unfilled at this, at this point. But President Obama appointed Julius Janikowski. He's the chairman of the FCC. And then we have uh, Robert McDowell and Commissioner Clyburn. They passed uh, Rules, like I mentioned, we have rules when we put in our fiber in the ground. We had rules in place that were the FCC rules that we would recover our investment. As of October, they changed those rules. They come out with new rules on the way universal service would be distributed. And what's sad about this, or what's a little bit frightening, is they passed the rules in October and it took them until November to finish writing them. So they passed them even before they were completely written. So we've been in contact with the FCC, letting them know what the impact is on Blue Valley. 
this is just a list of some of the activities we've been involved with. Uh, I don't want to go through all of that, but like I said, in November they issued the rules. We actually we filed comments on behalf of Blue Valley. We filed comments to those rules as to what the impact would be on Blue Valley. We also were signed on with three other comments that were filed. In addition to that, we're named in two different appeals that were first entered into the Fourth Circuit Court and are now in the Tenth Circuit Court. That's in Colorado. They're going to be looking at this appeal as to uh, the validity of, or does the FCC have the authority to implement these rules? So that's what the appeal will do, and the judges are going to have to decide whether the FCC even has the authority to do that. My take on it is Congress passed the laws. It's not up to the FCC to change the laws. It's Congress that should change the laws. Okay, my um, We've dealt quite a bit with our members of Congress, and we've really got to know these, these people pretty well. Uh, we've been out there several times, and of course we've got them when they were here in Kansas. We've got Senator Jerry Moran, who he was on the House side in the first district, and then he moved on to the Senate, and then Tim Fuels Camp actually took his place in my house. We have Senator Pat Roberts, and Pat Roberts is a senior member in the Senate. Uh, his main focus is the farm bill, so he's very interested in farming issues. We also have Representative Lynn Jenkins in the second district. Now, we've had various letters going to the FCC, and Senator Moran actually has signed on to two of those letters, and Representative Jenkins has signed on to two of them. But the rest of them haven't signed on, and we're, we're still working with them. And I'm sure they've got their own reasons for not signing on, but these letters that we've sent to the FCC have said, wait a minute, look at what you're doing to the rural subscribers. Look what you're doing to these rural companies that have been progressive and put in the fiber optics to get broadband out to rural America. And that's what President Obama had wanted to do. He wants us to get broadband throughout the whole United States. And yet, the FCC, everything they seem to be doing is penalizing those companies like Blue Valley that has gone out and done it. And so, we're still dealing with our representatives to say, hey, we need to get the FCC to stop and to, to let the dust settle and just uh, see what they're doing. I bring up this, this picture here because, as I mentioned, President Obama appointed the FCC commissioners. Now, what I've learned is the FCC agents, as an agency, they are not a member of the cabinet. They're what's called an independent agent. So they don't have to answer to anybody on the cabinet or discuss anything in the cabinet. Uh, in fact, President Obama doesn't even talk to them. So they're pretty much able to do whatever they want to do. Uh, Secretary Tom Vilsack, he's head of uh, the U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture. Another hand is Jonathan Hellstein who is the administrator for the Rural Utility Services, or RUS, where we actually borrowed our money to put the fiber optics into the ground. So both of them, uh, Tom Belsack and uh, Jonathan Alstein, are very aware of the situation that we're in and are sympathetic, but their hands are tied because they're another agency, and the government can't have two agencies fighting against one another. So we're kind of caught in the middle at this point. One thing I do want to mention is first Tom Vilsack. He is chairman of a White House uh, council, if you will, put together by President Obama to promote rural. So he's got quite a voice there on the cabinet, but again, is anybody listening? And it's interesting to me that President Obama had mentioned in the State of the Union address the importance of getting broadband out, but he also was in Iowa. And he, he told the people in Iowa that he's supporting the rural and that he wants to get the broadband out into rural Iowa too. So we're hearing one thing from the president, we're hearing something else from the Department of Agriculture. And then the FCC is like on a whole different plane and they're just doing something different. So just to summarize, we've had quite a year, we've done quite a bit as far as accomplishments, we're looking forward to moving ahead in 2012, there's a lot of uncertainty, but just the same, we're moving ahead, and we're going to continue uh, the political action, we're going to get more and more involved, and let people in Washington know that rural America is, needs to be saved, we need their help. 